that f of x equal 2x to the fourth minus 10x squared uh, minus the 28. We're asked a series of questions about this. Uh, first up, we're asked to find the y-intercept. Remember now, the y-intercept is just where x is equal to 0 at. And so that's just going to be when x is 0 here, then y is just a negative 28. So the point 0, negative 28 is the y-intercept. There'll be only one y-intercept. And now is the question of how do we find these x-intercepts? Uh, first we're going to find it with a calculator. And then we're going to find it with a uh, with algebra. So um, under y equals, you put in type in the formula, get a good graphing window. The window that I found that works well for this is having x between negative 10 and 10, but then having y go down to negative 40 and up to 20. And when you get the graph, it looks like that. To use the graphing calculator to get the zeros above the trace button is a, something called calc. So you hit that second trace. The number two option is the one you want. And the way it works is you go to the left of the thing that you think is zero. You go to the right of the zero. And then you hit enter. And it guesses for you what the zero is. And if they wanted to, you know, three decimal places, we'll call it 2.646. So 2.646 is one of them. This graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. The opposite is the other guy. You can verify it using, uh, using the, the calculator. But, uh, but yeah, that'll be the other guy, negative 2.646. So we have the intercepts. Um, they ask us to graph it, so while we're at it, let's go ahead and grab that and paste it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, great. And then... Here's what the graph will look like. And then that helps us to answer the end behavior question. They ask us, well, what happens at the left end? As x gets very small, that's left end behavior, the function gets very big, goes to infinity. On the right end, as x gets very big, so will the function, the y values. This function continues on in this direction. So as you go off towards infinity, for the right end, the function's going to infinity. As you go off towards negative infinity, for the left end, the function's going towards infinity. That's what happens when you have even degree polynomials. They either both go to positive infinity or they both go to negative infinity on their end behavior. Based on the coefficient being positive, we can say they both go to positive infinity. And so then we're left with trying to find these x-intercepts, these zeros algebraically and so we're trying to find where the function is equal to zero where where 2x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 28 equals to zero and we can do that by first recognizing that all these coefficients are even it'll make it easy to take a, that 2 out leaving us with x fourth minus 5x squared um, minus, this is going to be uh, 14. It's going to be equal to 0. Now, it's a fourth degree polynomial. Usually you don't try to factor these. Usually it's a bunch, a bunch of trouble to do it. But, if we treat it as if it was a like a quadratic polynomial, then it, then it factors nicely. In fact, let's do a, a change of variables. Let's let w equal x squared. So then we'd have 2 times w squared minus 5w minus 14 and we could factor that to be w minus 7 and w minus, uh, plus 2. And then we can sub back in the fact that w was x squared and we have the following 
um, factoring of that polynomial x squared minus 7 and x squared plus 2. And if this is going to be equal to 0, we take these guys and separately set them equal to 0. It won't be that 2 is 0. This guy, x squared plus 2, is never 0 because you square something that's positive and you add 2 to it, it's more positive. So if the product is going to be 0, it's going to have to be from this term, x squared minus 7 equals 0, or that x squared is 7, giving us the fact that x is plus or minus the square root of 7. And if you throw that into a calculator, you'll find that you get the same values that we had before. If we throw um, the square root of 7 into a calculator, we should get that same uh, 2.646 uh, rounded to three places. Okay, great. And so that solves the problem. We have found the x-intercept, we found the y-intercept, we graphed it, we know the left end and right end behavior, we um, even can find those x-intercepts algebraically. Okay, great.